Okay, well, yeah, it's been a really long time, but hey, all it takes is one kind of dumb article like this one, and I'm just back at it again. So I, I, I first saw this article, ironically, on Facebook first, which is usually kind of rare. It's usually filters to Facebook after other social media, but then... So it was on, I saw it through Facebook. It blew up on Twitter. Uh, it's just all over my timeline. People kind of uh, like sharing this article and talking about it. And then uh, I saw it uh, finally reach TikTok. Uh, so yeah, this article has been stirring up quite uh, quite a bit. So uh, so I figured I would just go through it, uh, talk about the, go through like these key points. I'm not going to really read the whole thing because it's really, really short. It'll take only like five minutes. So I'm not going to go through uh, and read it word for word, but we're just going to, we're going to read some of it, uh, and then we're going to go through the different points, uh, point by point, basically, and and kind of talk about why a lot of articles like this are usually not very well written, not very good, not very grounded in reality, um, and kind of like maybe we'll get into some answers, maybe some advice after that. But so the so the article, the rise of the of lonely single men, dating apps, and a drastically changing relationship landscape. Okay, so far, yes, right? Can you find study after study that shows that men are lonelier now and not getting as many dates, not going out as much? Yes, you can definitely find these things. Um, but hey, it, we'll see. Maybe there's me. This article gives us some answers. I'm going to say no, but we'll, we'll see. So the key points that it gives us, it says that dating opportunities for heterosexual men are diminishing as relationship standards rise. Uh, a common theme in a lot of these articles is you're going to find out that these, these elusive relationship standards are never talked about. They just say standards are increasing, uh, but nowhere do they ever talk about what those standards are or why they're increasing or uh, what that has to do with people getting dates. Now, this, of course, the this is the one statistic in here. This is the one I actually like is the most, well, it is true. And also, um, it's probably like, there's no really like debunking for this one is, yeah, that men represent approximately 62% of dating app users lowering their chances of matches. So that's true, obviously. If you're over half the population of a particular uh, service, yeah, you're, you're going to have trouble um, getting matches. There's going to be a lot more in the other direction. There's going to be a lot more matches for women than there are for men. Uh, so that's kind of unfortunate, but it's something that like if you've been using online dating for any length of time, it's something you've kind of either A, you've just learned to deal with, um, or you've, you've been kind of trying to figure out a little bit. There's little tips and tricks, uh, especially with like dating apps that you can use to kind of like increase your chances. I know um, one, I guess like hack you could call it on, on services like Tinder, if you set your radius to i think one mile anything outside of that mile are people that have like already liked you chances are chances are and like inc can increase your chances of finding people that like you uh and little things like that so like there's stuff you can do um to like boost your chances of in that but overall it's kind of like this uphill battle and then finally the big one that men need to address skills deficits to meet healthier relationship expectations again these relationship expectations will pr almost not never talked about so let's look at so the big first big point uh, that they want to talk about is what's about dating apps, right? So uh, dating apps uh, says the pro so the only problem with the uh, with that is that upwards of sixty percent of users are men, and many women are overwhelmed with uh, how many options they have. Now, it, so this is kind of a weird way of phrasing this, right? These, they're saying these women are overwhelmed by the amount of options that they have. Well, okay, so is that there's two things, right? Overwhelmed in the sense that like oh, there's like a hundred really good quality guys that I've matched with. And therefore now I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed because I just don't know which guy to pick. Like they all, they all sound so good. Or what's closer to being true, I believe, is that most women probably get close to a hundred messages a day, maybe less, maybe a little less, a little more, but I would say probably 40 to 50 a day on average, a hundred would probably be higher depending on the service. And that's what they mean by being overwhelmed, I believe, right? It's not so much, oh, how many options they have. It's that they probably get inundated with messages every single day. And most of the messages, probably 80 to 90% of them just say hello or how are you or whatever. And um, so it's just really difficult to filter through all of those. So I, I do understand. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I understand the problem with that and how difficult that can be. Sure, if you have, you know, 40 messages in one day, yeah, filtering through those, sifting through, figuring out, okay, are there ones that are genuine? Are there, you know, first step, are these people, these people even live close to me, right? If some guy messages you and he's a hundred miles away and it just says, hello, like, uh, I don't blame you. I don't blame you for not getting back to that guy or to not talking to that guy. 
Um, and what does it say? It says competitions, our competition in online dating is fierce and lucky in-person chance encounters with dreamy partners are rarer than ever. This is a really awkward way to put that lucky in-person chance encounters. Dreamy. So the problem with this in-person things, first of all, I'd say dreamy partners, which is very strange, but the problem with these in-person, right, encounters is that growing up, a lot of men growing up, they do, um, there's a lot of of pressure on them and a lot of information out there, especially they probably see a lot of friends, right? I mean, you know, things like Facebook and all that are very popular and you're likely to have female friends on Facebook, right? These are people that you know uh, from high school, college, whatever, and you listen, right? You you see what they post. And I, I know, at least for me, a lot of people that that I know, a lot of women I know will post, be posting on Facebook pretty frequently about you know, uh, guys that have approached them in public. Uh, very common, of course, you can always see uh, people talk about like, oh, meeting girls at the gym and whatever. But then you hear from women that when they don't want to meet anyone at the gym, like, oh, if their headphones are in, that means I don't want to talk to you. Uh, and then over and over again, you know, uh, young men are given this message that women don't want to talk to you in public. They want to just do their thing and they don't really want to hear from you um, because men who approach them in public are creepy, weird, whatever. So automatically as a guy, you're, you're not in, you're not going to want to talk to someone in public. You're going to be like, okay, hold on. Nobody really wants to talk to me. They don't have any time. They're busy doing their own thing. Uh, I'm not going to worry about them. Now, sure. Okay. Yes. You can approach women in public. I, I've heard it happens. I know people who've had success with it and whatever, and that's fine. It does work. Right. But for the most part, if you're someone who is if you're a guy and you're trying to sort of break away from this, the idea of like toxic masculinity and all that kind of stuff, if you're trying to break away from that and trying to like go your own way and, and be your own person, you might not want to approach someone in public because again, you hear nonstop from good friends of yours, other people, you, other women that you know, and they talk about how they don't want to hear from you. So relationship standards, oh, the ever elusive relationship standards. The problem I have with most of these articles is they very rarely ever talk about what those standards are or, or a way of quantifying how to achieve those standards, right? And we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so yeah, relationships there. But so many options, it's not surprising that women are incredibly selective or increasingly selective. Sure, yeah, it makes sense. If you have 100 messages a day, yeah, you could pick literally the best of the best. You could you could find two guys. You know, if, if I have a thousand messages from dudes or a hundred, however many, right? And I see a guy or a girl, whoever, and they they check every single box, but then one guy is uh, six two and the other guy is you know, five nine. Well, I could basically then just come down to like really materialistic choices or materialistic uh, standards at that point. Because if I have two guys who are generally very similar, or, or 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 at least their online dating profiles are very similar, why not just go with the taller guy, or the guy with the better job, or whatever? You can do, you can pick like these tiny bits. And that's what leads to, I think, a lot of guys assuming that women only go for taller dudes, whatever, you know, six foot and up, this and that. Because yeah, if I have a hundred options and all of them are generally the same, why not just pick the tallest guy? Because like at that point, how do you filter them out, right? So yeah. Uh, and then this guy plugs his own live TikTok show and he speaks with hundreds of audience members every week. And he says, I hear recurring dating themes from women between the ages of 25 and 45. That's a pretty broad gap. 25 and 45, like 25, you're looking and 45, you're looking for entirely different things in dating, relationships, everything. It's, that's a huge gap. But here's, here's the juicy bits, right? They prefer men who are emotionally available, good communicators and share similar values. So here's the thing. These are great standards, I guess you could call them, right? But these are entirely subjective. Emotionally available, okay, well, how emotionally available? Like, there's so many levels to emotional availability. I know a lot of people also talk about, like, emotional intelligence is another one people look for, but there's also no real way to quantify, like, what is emotionally available, right? How does that, how do I become more emotionally available? Or how do I know if I'm emotionally available enough? And it's something maybe I've already kind of completed. I don't need to really work on that, Right. You know, there's a lot of things in when it comes to, you know, emotional availability, there's a gap between going on dates and ending up in a relationship. And these things are two different things. And no, nobody ever uh, addresses the difference between that. And there is, there's a huge difference between those two things. And if you've dated and been in a lot of relationships, you, you know this, right? So emotional availability is more something that if I'm in a relationship, then I'm worried about the emotional availability. If I'm just trying to get a date, you really don't necessarily have to be as um, emotional availability isn't as big of a factor, right? Because if you're just trying to get a date, you're not looking, 
you're very rarely have I gone on a first date with someone and before the date I go, okay, this is gonna be the one I'm marrying. I gotta make sure that she checks all the boxes. Like, and it never happens. That's something you're doing. You're, you're trying, the point of going on dates is to get to know someone, see what kind of person they are, see how they interact with the world around them, right? I know one of the big, um, uh, a big like red flag oftentimes people will talk about is like, oh, pay attention to how your date like at a restaurant treats the wait staff, like the waiters and waitresses and stuff. Uh, and that can be like a big red flag or whatever. And yeah, the, these are all things you're gonna be looking for. So that doesn't have anything to do with emotional availability, right? Uh, now, good communicators, this is where I have another big problem, right? Good communicators, like the, the problem is there is a myriad of different communication styles and everybody has their own. Everyone also has their own communication style that works for them, right? Now I've been on several dates, right? Been in several relationships, but the thing is, well, up until this point, a lot of them haven't worked out or all of them haven't worked out right up until this point. So if you were to ask, say the girl that I'm currently with, am I a good communicator? She would probably say yes, right? Or at least I hope she would, right? But if you were to go and ask all of the previous relationships that I've been in, they might tell you different. They might say, well, no, it didn't really work out. Like I didn't think he communicated well enough. So then what's the takeaway from that? Is the takeaway that my current girlfriend is just some fucking bimbo who doesn't understand me, doesn't understand emotion or whatever because she thinks I'm a good communicator and, and like the you know 10 previous relationships I've been in would all say something different, right? So how do you quantify that, right? Obviously, if I'm if I'm not with a girl anymore, it's because we didn't communicate well, because our communication styles or our personalities or whatever conflicted or they didn't, they just didn't mesh. Now that doesn't mean that these are bad people, right? But they just didn't mesh. So you could look at it and say, oh, well, maybe I worked on them, right? Maybe I got better at communicating and now like finally this one girl has worked. Now that sure could be, um, but again, it's it's what didn't work, you know, uh, like what kind of things didn't work with these previous girls that work now, we'll never know. The, the world will never know. And that's the problem, right? Um, and then similar values, it, that's again, that's really subjective, right? Everyone has different things that they value. Everything, in, you know, everyone has different boundaries, right? And, and in relationships, often you'll talk about deal breakers, right? Certain things are deal breakers for other people, right? Uh, someone might be, maybe maybe it's height, right? Somebody for a deal breaker. If they're under six foot, that's a deal breaker. Well, that's for them. That doesn't mean that, the, that a person under six foot is a bad person or like a piece of shit or whatever, right? The, the person who's under six foot might be the most emotionally available person in the world, the best communicator that's ever lived. But if there's a value, if there's something that, uh, you know, if they are, if there's a prospective date and that person doesn't, uh, you know, values height more than these other things, then that person's kind of out of luck. But that doesn't mean that that person has a deficit. It just means that there was some need or there was some requirement that they weren't met. And my point is that's okay. That's not a deficit. That's not a problem. But anyway, let's move on. Skills deficits. Uh, let's see. Skills deficits. For men, this means relationship skill a relationship skills gap, if not addressed, will likely lead to fewer dating opportunities, less patience for poor communication skills, and longer periods of being single. Uh, it says the problem for men is that emotional connection is the lifeblood of healthy long-term love. Emotional connection requires all the skills that families are still not consistently teaching their young boys. Oh, of course. Um, but what's interesting is up here, okay, men have to be emotionally available. But then we're talking about here, we're talking about emotional connection, right? Even in the same article, we're, when we're trying to boil it down, we're trying to say, well, here are things that men need to work on. Well, we're using like several different terms that now, do these terms all mean the same thing? They could, I don't know. The author doesn't go into those details. So again, we're, we're looking at these, these quote, these skills deficits, right? Where again, these are things that are just, they're so subjective, right? I mean, you you can have again different. There's different attachment styles. There's different communication styles. There's all these things that are they're different, and they're not necessarily bad if you prefer one over the other, or if you have a certain type of attachment style that may not fit with a prospective date. And the point being, that's okay. But nowhere in articles like this does it ever say that. It always just addresses these things as a skills deficit. And it says, oh, you're having trouble getting dates as a man? Your pride is not emotionally available enough. And it's like, well, what makes me more emotionally available? What makes me unavailable emotionally? And if they don't tell you that, then, or if there is no reason you can come up with, it's like, well, how do I know, right? Oftentimes the problem is they talk about online dating a line here. And the problem becomes, well, if I, uh, very often, a common experience in online dating is you can message a girl, maybe you send, maybe she writes back to you and, and about two to three messages uh, between back and forth. And then you ask her like, hey, how was your day? Or, hey, you know what, you want to get together this weekend? And then she just goes to you, you never hear from her again. 
So if I'm having that problem, well, what's, why is that not, why am I not successful there? What's the difference? Are you going to say that, oh, well, you just weren't emotionally available enough. Really? Because I messaged her, hey, how was your day? Or like, what do you do for work? You know, getting to know you, very simple, getting to know you things, the very impersonal sorts of things. Because I imagine if, because the other, on the flip side of it, right, you could say, oh, well, you're not asking like good, meaningful questions, right? Sure. But is my first message to a girl going to be like, hey, how are you doing? Or is it going to be, hey, so uh, what are you looking for in a relationship? Do you want to get married long term? What do you think about kids? Uh, this and that. Like, those are really more, a lot more serious questions. Those are like relationship questions, right? Those are, those are things you might want to get after you sort of get to know someone, like what kind of person are they before I start asking them like what their opinions on marriage or anything else, right? So again, it comes to this, like you're, if I'm in a situation where I'm having trouble just getting a date, I'm having trouble to get women to message me back. Well, that has nothing to do with my emotional availability, uh, you know, emotional connections, any of that sort of stuff. It has nothing to do with that because you're never getting to that point where those um, types of things are actually going to become relevant. Another thing that I want to point out here is this is very awkwardly as it talks just about like that these algorithms are becoming better and, and they're really good, which is fine. And you get like better matches, right? Okay, so Hinge, pretty popular dating app, uh, says that through these things, 90% of users rated their first date positively and 72% indicated wanting a second date. First of all, that's a huge gap. 90% said their first date was good, but then only 72% they wanted a second date. That's kind of crazy. Um, that, I don't know, you have to like dive into more details on that. But here's another part. This is a part that I kind of always take issue with is that uh, so it's how can men reap the benefits of the algorithm? God, the ever the holy algorithm. Uh, level up your mental health game. Doesn't matter with that. No, no definition. No, what does level up your mental health game mean? No, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, that means getting into some individual therapy to address your skills gap. It means valuing your own internal uh, world and respecting your ideas enough to communicate them effectively. It means seeing intimacy, romance, and emotional connection as worthy of your time and effort. So. First of all, one thing that this recommendation uh, is kind of garbage to me is this getting into some individual therapy to address your skills gap. The problem is, right, one, that basically says there's a paywall to relationship success now, that as a man, you have to pony up the cash to go to therapy in order to become like a better person, right? And that you can only become this better person by going to individual therapy, right? Okay. Um, so that's part of it, right? Obviously, and, and now, I mean, especially if you live in the United States, like healthcare is kind of an issue right now, right? So some people may not have access to that kind of stuff, may not have the money for it. There's a whole list of things. And now by saying something like this, by just saying like, hey, you have to go to therapy to address these, is there now, there's now, they're, they're now creating this correlation of better, you know, go to therapy equals more dates. And I don't think that's the case. I don't think I could imagine, right? I don't think I could envision myself going to a therapist. And when they say, so what brings you here today? And I could say, well, I have a lot of trouble getting dates. And they'd be like, well, do you have, you know, they would ask me all sorts of questions. I would say, well, no, I'm actually not in a relationship. It's just, uh, I message a hundred girls a day on, on, um, Tinder and none of them get back to me. And I was told on psychology today, it says I should go to individual therapy. And these women will start responding better because I need to be more emotionally intelligent. Like I think a therapist, there's no way that would be a thing that you could do. Right? There, there's no way if any therapist would take you seriously. If you were just going there, cause you're like, I don't get any dates. It's like, okay. And it just brings back to to my original, uh, to my, one of my prior points that literally like the, there's a huge difference between like getting a date and ending up in a relationship. And these two things are so far apart from each other because getting dates is one thing, right? All you have to do is just kind of like be attractive, not be a, a total monster. And like, you can probably get like a first date with someone. Like those are pretty simple things. But then when it comes to like being in a relationship, that's when I understand, I can understand saying, okay, yes, you know, the emotional connection, the um, you know, matching your values, being a good communicator, all of these things. Again, they, these come more into play once you're like in a relationship with someone, not just like, oh, I'm trying to get a date. Um, and it's the thing is for some reason, these people don't ever address the, the difficulty and like the mountain that it is to climb for a guy just to like, hear back from a girl. And so, and, and like your average guy, yeah, they're going to message 20, 30 women in a day, maybe, or a week or whatever, you know, whatever their, their, uh, rate is. And then you're going to sit there and say, maybe two women reply to you. And then maybe of those two, one of them probably goes to you after the second message. And you're going to sit there and you're going to tell men that like, well, he just have to work on yourself. Really? Is that, is that what it means? Am I going to have to work on myself? Is that, I mean, because again, like there's, there's way too much, yeah, this video is getting long already, but, um, one of the biggest things that I know when I was doing the online dating thing, I would come across tons, probably several hundred women who had 
like horrible profiles. They were barely filled in. The pictures were like the absolute worst quality. They looked like they were taken on an old Game Boy camera. Like they were terrible. And I had like nothing to say to these people because they, their, their profiles like two words or would like just be like four or five pictures and like one sentence that just said like, don't be creepy. What? Like, how am I supposed to interact with this person? Right. But, but that's not their fault. They're doing fine. They're doing everything correctly. It's me. I'm the one that needs to work on myself. Right. It's, and that's what I say. It's so difficult to, you can sit here and tell guys, Hey, you got to work on yourself. Got to have better emotional connections, better this, better that. And then at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I could be, I could be, have all of these things, right? I could be the best communicator the world has ever seen. I could be so emotionally available. It's disgusting. And I could send out a hundred messages to women. They could be multi-paragraph messages where I detail like the values of my life and how I think they mesh with their values and everywhere. And still those hundred women, maybe two would get back to me and one would still ghost me at the end of the day. Like, so then what do I work on? Right. And it's my issue with this is that these things that we talk about men working on are not quantifiable. They're very difficult to say, well, oh, you've hit a milestone. You've become successful in your communication skills. That's now you can go ahead and get tons of dates because it's just not going to happen. So yeah, I'm going to have longer periods of time where I'm single, of course, because again, I'm, I'm messaging hundreds of women until like maybe two or three, four reply if I'm, you know, um, or if I'm like exceptionally good looking, maybe like 10 to 15 reply, right? And you have no idea. So, and, and the problem is, and I guess kind of wrapping this all up, the problem is we have a lot of articles like this, a lot of these ideas that like men need to work on all of this stuff, all of this kind of nebulous, unquantifiable stuff. And don't get me wrong. These are good things to work on, but there's all these things to work on. And then you have the opposite of that. You have what I would say, like a, you'd call like the red pill community, right? You have these people who they look at it and they say, Hey, you're right. You do need to work on all these things, except, you know, it helps you get there. Got to have a lot of money, got to have nice cars, big house, be a, you know, an entrepreneur or whatever. And, uh, and then women will just start flocking to you. And that's what they do. They, they look at it and they, they say to these young men, the, the red pill community says, Hey, you're doing a great job. You know what you gotta do? You gotta hit the gym, boost your confidence. Women will flock to you and they don't talk about anything else, right? They look at it. They, you know, the, the red pill community will take, you know, emotional maturity and communications and say, Hey, that's a woman thing. That's for women. Men don't do that. Um, and the problem is you see a lot of these red pill guys, they have, you know, business success. They have a lot of money. They have nice cars, whatever. They're always on Instagram with hot women and whatever, and they appear successful. Right. And this all kind of stems. If you remember several years ago, like the, um, the pickup artist community, right? These are the guys who would wear kooky costumes and stuff, whatever, and go out. They popularize negging and all that kind of stuff. But the problem is as a guy, you can, you know, take their classes and whatever. Let's say you approach 20, 30 women. And all of them don't, you know, are turned off by you, right? But you approach that 31st woman and she's receptive to it. In a man, in, in, in a man's mind, that's a super successful program. Now, why? Because we're used to that. We're used to reaching out to 30, 40 women at a time on like dating apps, only getting like one response. So that 20 or 30 to one ratio is like perfect for us. So even if we take something that most of our, you know, most of our female friends and other people say, oh, that's toxic, that's bad, that's not good, well. All it has to work is once because we're used to those really bad odds. So the point, so, so bring it back to this conclusion, right? So when we refuse to address these issues, right? And we don't talk about men and the struggle of being like on dating apps and being, getting yourself out there and whatever, and we don't talk about these things, we kind of concede those to the red pill community. And what we don't have is we don't have any sort of good role model or example um, that sort of is the opposite of the red pill. That's why we get stuck with the people like Andrew Tate and whatever, because nobody else is talking to young men like that. And no one else is talking to young men in an understanding manner of, look, I understand your struggle. It's all just like get better men, you know, which is not a good, not a good way to do it. So a, a recommendation, spend some time, think about your relationships. Uh, if you're, if you're going on dates and you find that you like them and they're not, or, and, and maybe the girls can get back to you, um, shoot your shot, take it to send a text message and say, Hey, I why didn't our date work out? Or, you know, uh, Hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. What, what happened? Maybe they'll answer you. Maybe they won't. Yeah, you gotta try, right? Um, talk to your friends about their relationships, right? If you, if you have friends who are in uh, committed relationships and stuff like that, just ask them, talk to them about it. Try to get a feel for things that they did that worked, that didn't work, whatever. Um, basically, and that's kind of, I guess the recommendation that I can use to sort of wrap all of this up, but maybe I'll find more information about this. Uh, I don't know, leave it in the, something in the comments of your thoughts on this whole situation, but yeah, it's kind of messed up. Um, it's just, if we don't address the, a lot of these issues when it comes to like dating and sort of the lopsided nature of, of matches for men versus women, uh, we're never really gonna make any changes. And as long as the, as long as the mantra continues to be, oh, men bad, men need to do better, men need to get this, that, 
it's just you're you're going to just concede so much ground to the likes of like Andrew Tate, the Red Pill community, all this stuff, and it's just we're going to just dig ourselves further and further in this kind of hole. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe, the usual nonsense, and I will see you all hopefully much more frequently in the future.